Inside the Birds is back. What's up, everybody? It's Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan here to preview a game between the Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. That's right. It's been Dallas week all week here. And it's an exciting game to, to preview for one reason and one reason alone. Not just because of the rivalry. One special reason, Adam Kaplan, is that mm. as of right now, Friday morning, when most people listen to this, I think mm. both head coaches just should, should just put their quarterbacks in bubble wrap until Sunday because we have not oh, yeah. seen an Eagles-Cowboys game with both Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott starting for their respective teams since early in the 2021 season. And as we know, that was a totally different Eagles team back then. Yeah. And that was a that was quite the uh the whooping that the Cowboys put on the Eagles then, but totally different teams now. Oh, look, first of all, there's so many storylines for this game. There are a ton. First of all, you've got the best team in the National Football League hosting one of the best teams in the NFC, in the Cowboys. This rivalry, Jerry Jones, and I know Joe Banner, the former Eagles president, uh, when he's come on our show over the years, he's talked about Jerry, who's known forever. <laughs> and they had a little, they, he, he said, look, there's always something Joe would say there's always something about Dallas. There's just something. Mm -hmm. And it, those of us who grew up in the Philadelphia area, it's that damn stars I've mentioned many times. Yeah. There's just something annoying about it. America's team, late great Steve Sable called him that. It, there's just, it, it's, it's, to me, it's the most detestable team in professional sports. One of the Yankees for me, as much as I hate the Yankees growing up here, I hate the Cowboys. I just hate them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, they're, they're so smug. I love, there's some great memes out there about the Cowboys fans. <laughs> How unrealistic they are uh but anyway so yeah, the, yeah. and then you've got as you mentioned the two quarterbacks playing aj brown got an out of his mind the i'm so fascinated because dan quinn does so much we're gonna get into this so much stuff post snap mm -hmm. and pre-snap maybe not the most talented secondary but they're deep they do a lot of stuff and this is great and dq knows this team very well yep so uh coaching in the nfc for years he's been also coached in the afc but certainly in the nfc for years and the Eagles have this incredible offense, great offensive line. There's just so much. And obviously Dallas, the last two games, is, after getting absolutely embarrassed by San Francisco, they're, they're playing really well right now. So, yeah, I know they haven't had a great schedule. But the bottom line is this is a marquee matchup, uh, maybe the second best of the week because the, the one in Germany between the Chiefs and the Dolphins might be number one. But this is a close number two. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You talk about the great, you know, obviously Dan Quinn and the, you know, what Dallas does on defense. The Eagles have a very, you know, for, very formidable pass rush as they always do. But this this game doesn't tend to be a defensive battle. In fact, if you look at the last four uh, games, most of them are over 60 combined points. We had a 40-34, yeah, wow. uh, 51-26, 41-21, 37 17. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of offensive firepower on both teams too. So we're going to – We'll get into all that. We'll break it down, talk about the injuries, uh, thing, key matchups. And then, of course, we will break it down yet again, even more so. And I'm really excited for our Inside the Birds pregame live show on Sunday. We're going to be back at Fringe Bar. So we're all going to be in the same spot. I want everybody to come out and join us and watch us and enjoy the great food and drinks at Fringe Bar. We'll get into that in a second. And I've decided, Adam, we're going to give something away. We're okay. going to give away a signed a football that has been signed by Nakobe Dean. Ooh, yeah, nice. we're going to give it away at Fringe Bar under this premise. Somebody has to show up and say, "Hey, I'm here to see ITV pregame live. I want to win that football." And so you'll have a chance to win the autographed football by Nakobe Dean if you show up to Fringe Bar, watch the show, and say, I, "I'm here to win." Also, the Nakobe Dean football. I'm here to win the Nakobe Dean football. Got it. I'm here okay. to win the Nakobe Dean signed cool. football. That's right. That's so we're looking cool. forward to that. It's a great place right on the Delaware waterfront, 140 North Columbus Ave. We were there two weeks ago for the Miami game, had a great time. Let me tell you, the food is awesome there. This is not just your you know bar and grill place. Awesome food, great drinks. We'll get into that. It's going to be a fun time. And then I'm going to go right from there to the Hard Rock Cafe to do another watch party. Eagles, Cowboys, watch party at Hard Rock Cafe right there on 11th and uh, Market in downtown Philly. So if you show up to that, I got more stuff. I'm going to be giving away prizes. We're going to do some analysis. It's going to be a fun time. Last time I was there, I bought somebody a drink for answering the trivia question correctly. I might do it again. So if you show up and party with me, you might as well, you might get your drink bought for you. So I can't wait to do that. It's going to be a great time. Inside the Birds, of course, this podcast is presented by Ocean Casino Resort in Atlantic City. It is the exclusive Jersey Shore Resort 
of Inside the Birds. We've had a ton of great Eagles Cowboys coverage this week. I thought Greg Cosell and Clay Harbor did a great job of recapping the Washington game, previewing what's to come here on Sunday against Dallas with Inside the Tape that they do on the Inside the Birds podcast. That came out Thursday. Ray Didinger, Ray Diddy, an awesome sit-down interview with Derek Gunn on Gun on One, and the numbers have been amazing on it. People have really loved that interview. Um, Ray had some really interesting things, Adam, to say about this year's Eagles team, um, about past Eagles team he's covered compared to this team. And then uh, we had to we had to hit him up a little bit at the end with, "Are you actually retired? Because, dude, you're everywhere, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to believe that Ray Didinger is retired because we see him and hear him everywhere. But yeah, great no doubt." Yeah, grew up a lot reading Ray and got to know him over the years, and as you did, man, D Guns. I mean, talk about the best interviews he's getting everybody. That's that's going to be awesome. Love yeah. the uh, Cosell and Harbor show. I'm, I'm halfway done it. You know, the cool thing about their show is it's so quick. It's less. It's usually around forty minutes or less. So I'll listen to the second half today. And oh, for Patreon, talk to John D. Flip on Thursday. He's back, and he we're taking his questions. Check the link on the, our Patreon page if you're a member. John's taking all of them. He's happy to do it. Patreon.com slash Inside the Birds. That's right. And we had a great, um, earlier in the week, an awesome uh, NFL trade deadline live stream. Ask ITB live stream with our, uh, our our members. That was fantastic, too. And then, of course, on Wednesday night, you did your Discord chat. Uh, had a great time, which you do every week. All right. Uh, some big-time transactions we're going to get to here. Uh <laughs> Big time names in the transactions. Obviously, the Eagles did what we thought they were going to do. They signed Julio Jones to the active roster. He is now on the 53 man. Um, and then they replaced him with a tight end named EJ Jenkins. So Julio Jones on the 53. Are you surprised that it was a tight end, given that they have four on the 53 man roster that already that they went with a tight end? No, I'm not because Calcaterra's got a concussion. So that keeps him down to three. And they also did not have one on their practice squad. Yep. So Jenkins is that guy. He's an undrafted free agent who was with the Jets in the preseason out of Georgia Tech. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he's a developmental guy. They needed – you always like to have four total between your – on your 69-man roster, 53 plus 16. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing with Julio Jones is they signed him off their practice squad a week early. They didn't have to do that. They could have waited. Correct. Like, like you said in the last show, maybe maybe they'll do this early to make sure that no one else signs him off there. But if I'm Julio Jones, why would you even consider going to another team? Because you got a chance to win a Super Bowl here. Well, like, where where's he going? Come on. That's why he came here. You know that was all part of the deal um, when he you would signed. Think. Yeah. You would think. Wink and by the way, not. Jack, Jack Stoll's got a little bit of a beat up ankle that we'll talk about. So well, that too. Yes, that's, that's another good sense. point. Right. He's also got ankle, but you really need to have four total. Yeah. Absolutely. On your 69 so- roster. Right. So they bring in EJ Jenkins, Julio Jones, now uh, an official member of the 53. Now, Cam Jurgens was activated into the practice window, the 21 day practice window. As of Thursday, the most he could do a practice was be limited. He has not had a full practice yet. Now that could change today, Friday. He might practice in full, but obviously uh, reporters have seen Tyler Steen working at right guard. He came in to play a little bit of right guard real quickly when Sua Opeta came out against Washington. Opeta is still, I think he is listed as a full participant in practice. Yeah, he should be available. So yeah. so that's interesting. So for, no, I get it. The reporters only get to see individual drills. They don't get to see the real part of practice. So we don't know for sure. We'll have more of this on, on our Sunny, uh, after our Sunny pregame show about what we're hearing, who's going to start there if Jurgens isn't activated. Oh, by the way, they have till tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern to activate him for this game where he can't play this week. Right. Uh, so, yeah, if, if he's listed as limited today, I'd be very surprised if they activate him. Because why would you activate him and not have him be a starter? Because if he practices full, that those are starters reps. Right. So we'll learn more today, uh, later today. That's that's going to be an interesting scenario to watch about how they how they handle the, the guard situation. You know, Steele only played six snaps, but – in place of Sua Opeta. But the good thing with Opeta now, okay, we know what the injury is. It's hip. Mm-hmm. Uh, he should play. He 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 got plenty of practice time in so far this week. And unfortunately, Grant Calcaterra with a concussion. You know, he he took the year off in college uh, from playing because of concussion. So that, that worries me uh, a little it bit. So me, yeah. We, yeah, we we wish him the best. And then Jalen Carter testing with fine. Expected to play. He's taken plenty of reps. Boy, when, when a guy leaves a, a game with a back injury, you're always concerned. But the good thing is he's expected to go. Cam Jurgens, we just talked about. Jordan Davis, 
expected to play. He's still on the injury report with the hamstring. Milton Williams, his third different injury in four weeks. The heel is now off the injury report. The shoulder is, but he's expected to play. Bradley Roby, he won't play. He hasn't practiced since he got hurt three weeks ago. Not good. Um, yeah, yeah. These, he would have been their nickel. Uh, so we'll see. We know that uh, City Brown technically was their main nickel last week, though they do what they do. They rotate a bunch of guys. We'll get into that when we preview the game. But off the injury report, this is good. Zach Cunningham with the ankle. He looked fine. This is big. Reed Blankenship with a ribs injury. That's great because, remember, it was the second different rib injury this season. Mm -hmm. Bradbury with the ankle. He's off of it. So that is good. Yeah, really good news. Uh, this is about as – I mean, I, I the the Roby injury, which we'll talk about, is is really tough because that's a position that they're really struggling at. But overall, we'll see what happens with Cam Jurgens. If he doesn't play, okay. You know, they've been able to survive without him. But this seems like the, the healthiest the Eagles have been as far as key players and key positions in a little bit. I mean, you know, you would love yeah. to have Roby back, but it's not like they got five guys in the secondary that are all banged up. So – it's time for the secondary to start actually playing a little bit better. And we'll Ooh. talk about that. Well, the pass rush needs to get home. But that's yes, that story. too. That too. Um, all right. Uh, congratulations goes out to, of course, A.J. Brown. He was named NFC Offensive Player of the Month of October. I don't know who else you would have given exactly. to. He set an NFL record. He now stands alone as the only player in the history of the league to have 125-plus receiving yards six straight weeks. If he makes it seven against Dallas, that will be some – kind of tear uh, uh that he's able to continue that would be pretty impressive i i'm curious so curious let's think about this on thursday I was talking to someone with another team we were just talking about the trade deadline and we talked about i asked him what he thought about the eagles he goes man at some point their teams are going to roll coverage over to aj brown i was like oh wow you know i never thought about that our teams we'll, we'll ask uh avon cosell if they noticed any and we'll ask Filippo today um we'll ask john if he, he if he noticed aj brown being doubled because this is what he's doing, as you know, is historic. And he, even when they have tight coverage, he seems to win with the late hands. Mm -hmm. At some point, teams are going to say, we're done with this. You're not going to do this to us. But that could free up skinny Batman on the other side. There you go. Well, yeah, that's a good question to ask Greg Cosell and Jason Avant, especially yeah. Jason being a wide receiver. Because mm -hmm. the more the tape builds, you're right, the more teams are going to have to strategize. But to your point, you know, he's a big guy. He's tough to just press and redirect off the line of scrimmage. And he makes catches in traffic. So even if you do double him, he just has the uh, uncanny ability to contort his body and use the late yep. hands to come down with the ball. So he's a he's a backbreaker of a player. Uh, as real quick. Know. Yeah, real quick. I, I saw the late hands. Okay. I've mentioned this play before in 22 OTAs when he first got there. He didn't practice a lot in 22 OTAs with the Eagles his first year. It was the play on that sideline throw to to, uh, to A.J. Brown, and he, Slay was covering him, and it was one of those because you don't have – you can't see – we don't have instant replay for the, the media. Oh, well, wait a minute. Darius Slay's right there. I don't understand. Like, how did he do that? Mm -hmm. Well, it was the late hands. He, he, he leveraged his body on Slay. That was the first time I'd ever seen that uh, as an eagle. And we've seen nothing but that. He, the guys, um, I, I, I mean, I'm sure Terrell Owens did that. I don't sure. know about your time watching practices of, of, of the Eagles or any, any any other teams you've seen, but I've never seen this before. What he does, and and, and the fact, uh, maybe maybe everybody watching knows. I can't remember the last time he got an o, a OPI. I, I don't know. Uh, that's a really good point. Normally, a guy like that draws a lot of OPI. <laughs> he has in the past, but I guess because maybe he probably has had a few. And then they've just been negated because he actually made the catch. So, <laughs> but yeah, he's something special right now. No, but All I'm right. saying uh, uh, OPI. I'm talking about pushing off. Oh, oh, and oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. OPI. No, no, yeah, OPI, no, OPI, He's, man. he's yeah. good about not getting that call on him. That's that's a good Unbelievable. He's on. I mean, he really is. And the attitude that he brings, the will that he has to, to win every single route. You know, I know they do a lot of crossers, but they also do take, not, they, they take nine routes with him, deep shots with him. Yeah. And he does it against everybody. No one's stopping him now. This is, I just can't wait to see what Dan Quinn has here. This is, this is, there's so many storylines for this game. Oh, the weather's going to be great. The early weather check should be high 40s, low 50s, very little wind. This is great. I'm glad because I want to see a clean game here with weather. And yeah, as you mentioned at the top here, and it's very important to note because we didn't get it last year with Prescott and, and Hertz playing in the same game. I'm, I'm really curious to see what this is going to look like. 
Right. Yeah, it's not Giants week, so that's how you know the weather will be all right. Whenever they play the Giants, it's yeah. it's, it's the weather is just as I, it's amazing how it rains every single time they play the Giants, whether it's here or at MetLife Stadium. But no, Cowboys are going to get some pretty good weather, so I'm excited for that too. Uh, let's get to the Cowboys injuries in a second. First, we want to pause real quick to hear from our friends at Ocean Casino Resort, the exclusive Jersey Shore Resort of Inside the Birds. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. All right. The Cowboys are relatively healthy. They're kind of like the Eagles in that relatively healthy, but there are a, there's a key spot or two, right, where they're, they could be short a player, and, and that could hurt them in the end. Um, they've got a couple of guys on IR. Everybody knows Trevon Diggs. Their, their Pro Bowl cornerback is on IR, ACL tear, out for the year. Uh, their middle linebacker, Leighton Van Der Esch, who's had so many neck injuries. You kind of wonder how much longer he's going to try to fight know. with these. You know? It's, know. it's unfortunate. He's a good player. But these yep. are certainly, even when he's healthy, Adam, I feel like he's not the same guy from the first few years because he's dealt with these injuries so much. Yeah, and and one of the reasons why they've not been a good run defense is, A, he's been out. You know, they they brought in Mozzie Smith, but he hasn't been the factor yet that they're hoping he will be eventually. They're very light at linebackers. Levan Resch is a big guy. Uh, but the kid we're going to get into marquise bell who's been a great story number 14 we're in a quarterback's number he uh he, he's an undersized linebacker is having to play because uh, because of injury and they also line up at safety he's really a safety in college he's playing linebacker too yeah this is what i was talking about with dan quinn these use of personnel is different this season because they're so deep now at at safety now don wilson's back from his injury and we'll get into the matchup so that i'm looking forward to this now yeah, the other injuries, the kid overshone. We talked about him on the other show. He tore his ACL. Yep. yep. And he was going to start, by the way. That that's you know, this is another thing. Like they're down at linebacker, as you said. And Trayvon Diggs is out for the season. So there's some matchups here. There the thing is, like, they have depth. That's not the issue. They're just not, they're not like superior talented. They're, right. they're just not they're, they're not the most talented defense. They're just deep. And they they've had some matchups where the Niners absolutely they crushed them. They always do. Yeah. <laughs> they, they crushed, I mean, they, the Niners. They that game was, was over in the first quarter. Yeah, I, it's yeah. it's very odd. You go look up and down Dallas' schedule, and they've they've, and especially Dak Prescott, he's some had some really impressive games this year. But then the sort the 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 San Francisco game sticks out like a sore thumb. He was terrible. The offense was terrible. The defense was terrible. It was, it's just you know, again, I, I think people the 49ers have have lost some guys through injuries the last few weeks, yeah. so they've come back to earth. But when they're at full strength, they're they're really darn good, and they just picked up Chase Young. Um, but that was clearly a situation where I don't know if they're in Dallas's heads, but they just keep beating Dallas, and that was a bad game for Dallas. I remember the playoff game where the Niners came into Dallas and they they handled them. It was a good game, but they won in there. So yeah, so the big one though. Let's get back to the injuries here. There's only one, and it's huge. Is Tyron Smith their left tackle? He's missed five straight practices. It doesn't look good. He had a neck stinger, and you know we you talked about this on Wednesday show. We remember the Jordan Howard, he had multiple neck stinger problems with the Eagles. So you're always worried about that. And he's an older player. So Adoga, his backup, was there, he's actually their swing tackle. He backs up both right and left tackle. He's a journeyman. He looks like he's going to start. He's okay with the ankle. He took his reps. Now, the only thing with Adoga, after Thursday's practice, he got added with a knee issue, but he was able to finish practice. So we'll see what happens later today. But right now, it looks like he's going to be able to start. The only other guy they have is the kid Richardson we talked about as a fifth rounder who's more of a guard than a left tackle. So that's an advantage for the Eagles. No matter what happens, if, if Tyron Smith is out and it looks like he probably will be, advantage Eagles. And that is, by the way, I believe Josh Sweat's side. And Sweat, well, Sweaty's yeah, playing. Yeah, they'll, they'll mix guys around, but yes, mostly. True, but um, that primarily, that's where he lines up. So yep. uh, that would be an issue for them as we get into the matchups. Yes, sir. And Tyron Smith's a good player when healthy. He's another one. He keeps getting neck injury, right? This is persistent with him. I believe mm -hmm. the neck. Um, neck and knee. Yeah. And neck and knee. Right, right. But when healthy, he, he is definitely a great player. All right. I did mention that we were going to be at Fringe Bar again. It's uh, North Columbus Ave, 140 North Columbus Ave. 
great place. You got to come join us for the pregame show. It's the Delaware Waterfront's most exciting new restaurant event space. It specializes in soulful pub cuisine inspired by the chef's culinary roots. And they've got bold Caribbean flavors like jerk chicken wings and tostones, which shares a menu with classic pub fare like the Fringe Burger and Fish and Chips. They've got a wood-fired pizza outside where they have additional seating. If you watch the show, you can see people behind us sitting by the fire, getting warm, eating that great wood-fired pizza. And they also have a creative cocktail menu. It features three handcrafted draft cocktails and a stellar selection of local beers that, fr- that makes Fringe Bar the perfect choice for a date night or late evening with friends, or coming to watch Inside the Birds pregame live. So again, Fringe Bar, 140 North Columbus Ave. We'll be there. The show starts at 1 o'clock. All right, you come watch us play. You say you're here for the Birds tailgate and watch party, and they'll have uh, a beer garden. They've got a 250-seat big screen theater that the game will play on. So after you're done watching our show, you go watch, you go in their, their stadium seating, basically, and watch the show on a big screen. And during our show, they're going to offer half-price wings, $4 draft beers, and an Eagles-themed cocktail featuring their partner Blue Coat Gin. All Blue Coat drinks will be $8 on game day, all right? So it's a great time to come on out to Fringe Bar again, 140 North Columbus Boulevard. and. Again, you could come away with a Nicobe Dean signed football. There you go. All right. Let's get into some of the matchups here uh, offensively for the Eagles versus the Dallas D. I think we answered the question and we talked about it in the last podcast. Can Jalen Hurts play okay with the knee brace and with his knee bothering him? Well, he threw four touchdowns and had like a one great last week. Pass, right? He was probably his best game of, of the year, to be honest. Oh, by he far. He, he was, yeah. I, I, I mean, he was so aggressive. It was vintage Hurts from last season. Look a lot. This game was probably the first time all season that pillar to post. First quarter through fourth quarter, he looked like the guy from last season. Because we've seen glimpses or we've seen two quarters of it. Maybe a third quarter is not as good. Whatever the case may be. Tampa Bay game, you saw some good throws and then it's inconsistent. He was phenomenal in this past game. And I, I, like Dan Quinn throws a lot of junk at you. He he He's junked the Seattle defense. You know, he, was, he used to be a Seattle Cover three guy, not anymore. A lot of man coverage. Their top five man cover, man coverage on the back end team. Mm-hmm. So you know that's coming. And I know Vaughn would always say he loved man coverage. Now, typically, if you're a man coverage team on the back end, that's when the quarterback who would like to run might run because the backs, the DB's backs are turned. But with Hertz not running as much because of the left knee issue, and he's what did he throw off in the pocket last week? Why run? I mean, I'm 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 saying why run a lot? I mean, I know he's going to run a little bit. But he he was so good last week. I'm, I'm I'm just interested to see what happens there. Now, you can beat these guys back there. And I know Stefan Gilmore is still a good player. He's not the same guy he once was. Might be a Hall of Famer someday. Terrific player. Man coverage corner guy. Jerron Bland was their nickel. He's playing outside corner now because of the Diggs injury. Jordan Lewis is their nickel, who's been, who's been on and off their nickel for many years. He's not a speed guy. He's a physical guy. You you can beat him. They're super deep at safety with Curse. Curse, if we... Seems like we talked about J. Ron Curse for five years now. Is there? It seems yes. like it at least, but it's it been does. three years. Is their coverage uh, tight end guy? Mm-hmm. So, and Millie Cook has revived his career. Donovan Wilson's a really good player. over his calf injury. They've got this versatility to do whatever they kind of want on the back end. But the Eagles are so good at receiver, and and Goddard's a stud. This is where the chess match comes in. How do you attack this secondary? Well, it's a re- it's a really good question, and I'll extend it to just sort of how do you attack the overall defense? Because if you remember, let's go back to last year's game that Jalen Hurts played. It was the first game of the year. Jalen Hurts played for the Eagles. Cooper Rush played for the Cowboys, yes. right? The big question was, how do they keep Micah Parsons off of Jalen Hurts' back? And what the Eagles did was they ran a lot of not just RPOs, but even keepers to his side, and where they or what looked like keepers. And then they would turn into passes. So they would focus their offense to the side that Micah, Par- they made Micah Car- Parsons the conflict player, right? If they were going to yep. run, they were going to pull him in, run to the outside. They almost didn't let him get to Jalen Hurts because they just kept putting him in conflict. Well, Jalen Hurts isn't running the ball anymore. Um, at least he hasn't lately. Not very much. Right. Not very much. And I don't, they're not running the same style of offense that they did last year uh, because okay. of that. So, how do you still make Micah Parsons a conflict player when you're not necessarily running with your quarterback to the outside? You can't get him to crash or you can't get him to defend 
either the 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 handoff or the outside because he's probably not going to respect the outside run at the moment. Uh, and plus, Dallas saw that and they adjusted even in the second game that the two teams played. So really, the question is, what is their plan to block? Micah Parsons is it making him a conflict player somehow again or is it sort of taking the Aaron Donald approach which is just putting as many bodies as you can on him the problem with that is much like we talked about with Washington uh, and some other teams if you put too many bodies on Micah Parsons they still have two or three other guys whether it's Dorrance Armstrong or Demarcus uh, Lawrence right who can capitalize on a one-on-one matchup uh, the way the Rams and some other teams can't all right, so here's what's going to happen. When they go in nickel, Lawrence will move inside. They'll have Parsons and Armstrong or Parsons and Fowler. Dante Fowler played for DQ in Atlanta. Yeah. So, they look, they've got a good rotation. Like, this is – this is and Sam Williams, he he he's, he had off-the-field issues in college. We've been out of Mississippi. He had that crazy – was it speeding? What did Jerry Jones say? It's, it's such a dumb comment, Jerry Yeah, Jerry I Jones forgot said. what it was. Uh, he was very uh, – you know, Jerry – I remember you read it. stuff. <laughs> It was one of those ridiculous Jerry Jones quotes that he's mat- something like he's maturing. Like some, it wasn't such a bad off the field as she was only speeding. <laughs> anyway, guy could play, man. He, they, they're super deep. Yeah. I mean, they, they've got this, as you mentioned, this great rotation. Now they're not a great run defense. Mozzie Smith doesn't play very much. Plays Surprising. maybe. What, what's that? That's surprising to me. I thought he was going to have a better adjustment to the NFL. Yeah, I mean, he's a rookie. We'll have to see and get re- used to the techniques, but they do have a deep rotation. Odigi Zua is the other starting D, uh, D tackle with John Hankins, has been around forever. Yeah. They got from the Raiders a few years ago. So, yeah, you're right. This is this is going to be a test. Now, if Jurgens is not ready, that that would concern me because DQ will take uh, – Dan Quinn, will, he'll know that by Saturday at Fort Payne Eastern, and they'll plan accordingly. They'll figure out if it's Opetta, what Opetta struggles with. That's what a good D coordinator does. He finds out what the weaknesses of a young lineman who doesn't start it a lot, and will try to exploit it. And and whether it's moving Tank Lawrence in a nickel, whoever they're gonna, whatever they're gonna do in, in nickel situations, that's gonna be certainly a challenge. Mm-hmm. But if they can protect, plays are there. Uh, uh, George Kittle absolutely annihilated them. I think he had three touchdowns against them, if I'm not mistaken, in week four or five. Mm. Uh, um, yes, so, week yes. five. Yes, yeah, Sunday night game. Right. He he had three. Uh, so that's great. Um, so, so he probably, cause again, in particularly nickel, you play, you almost always play, you always play man. So I look forward to seeing that. Uh, they were actually, the Niners ran well. Uh, they ran for 170 against the, the Cowboys. So look, this is a beatable defense. Yes, they're deep, but the bottom line is to sum it up here. They've shown vulnerability. Yeah. I think normally when we talk about teams like the Cowboys that play three safeties a lot, you say, well, if they're going to play big nickel, you want to be an 11 personnel a lot and just throw the, you know, you want, you want speed against um, big personnel, but the Cowboys are a different type of big nickel team. You know, they, those, like you said, Donovan Wilson can, can play the position well. And J Ron Kurz can play the, did I have that right? Is Donovan Wilson still a Cowboy? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Wilson and J Ron Kurz. Right. So those are good safeties. And because of their front line, sometimes you need that extra protect. You might need 12 uh, personnel and two tight ends. So I don't know that this is going to be a heavy 11. I think it might be an alternating type of game, which the Eagles seem to do a lot of, especially if they want to um, mix the run in the pass because the Cowboys run defense is not great. They had, they, it was bad last year. It's better this year. They're 18th. They still allow about 109 yards per game, but we have to see what the Eagles situation is. Boston Scott was missing um practice this week for personal reasons and yeah. so that le- really leaves like deandre swift as your number one and you know where do they go from there if boston scott isn't back or he just isn't you know if something's not not right well, i don't game know, too. On, we know, game, you know right we know we know game wells too and, and ga- that's the point game game well, penny. yeah game wells number two and right now he's not really giving you uh, a whole lot so you don't and they don't, they don't really want to give a lot yeah. they don't want to give yeah. swift like 30 carries in a game so well as I just said, maybe they'll use Penny. I mean, it could be breaking news if they play him because they refuse to. Yeah. The staff and look, I get it. You get what you earn. I I, I get that totally. You don't just play a guy because he's on your roster. But you you mentioned this on the Wednesday show. You're always worried about Swift's touch total because the the, the Lions they wanted benching him last season partially because he could, just couldn't stay on the field. But there was always this worry about how much volume you could give him. Now he, he's held up. I don't want to say he's worn down lately. They're just not getting the explosives that they were getting earlier in the season. Their their explosive run rate is down. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm interested to see what the plan of attack here is. And and look, also, 
we've seen this a, a decent amount. The backs are getting the ball to the backfield. We're not seeing the explosives downfield that we saw in training camp, you and I. Right. But I'd like to see that. I think it's going to be, I suspect, I should say, uh, this will be kind of a, sh- a short to intermediate type of attack for the Eagles. Um, and then if they have a chance to block it up and go deep, they will. They'll take those shots. But I think they're going to have to loosen up the Cowboy defense by m- sort of moving the ball efficiently down the field. Listen, the big thing is if they don't turn the ball over, I think they'll be okay at doing that. They've turned the ball over way too much this year in, in sometimes fluky Crazy. ways, but also in – um, just poor discipline ways. They've got to clean that up. If they if they have two or more turnovers, I don't see them winning this game. I, I just think that we'll get in our picks in about 10 minutes, but I, I, I just look at it and say this. The matchups, I, I, the Eagles, if they could protect, if Parsons does not become a factor, they're in great shape. If he's a major factor, they're in trouble. Because mm-hmm. that means he's getting home, creating havoc. He's incredible. You know from being a Penn State guy, this kid's super gifted. Yeah. He's relentless. He, it's just, I'm, I'm so interested to see what Dan Quinn does. And what's the plan by Jeff Stout? And we were talking at the top here. It's so many storylines. What's Stout going to do if Parsons starts getting home? So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. In, uh he has played three games against the Eagles. Uh, four games against the Eagles. Nope, three because he was hurt for one. Uh, do you know how many sacks he has against the Eagles? Zero. He has a half of a sack. Really? Okay. He's only played three games. Okay. And one quarterback hit. So they have, they have held him down (laughs) so so far. We'll see how that goes. Oh, by the way, you you remember the game in Dallas last year Mm -hmm. where Minshew, if he didn't turn it over, they probably would have won the game. That was a scoring fest. Yes, it was. Yeah. Like you said, that this game's have been high scoring because Parsons has been a factor, but he's having a great year. So you, you can't underestimate that. And then, the other, the other to finish these these matchups off for the Eagles offense. Uh, see, because the Dallas plays a lot of man, you would think Gilmore would be on him quite a bit. If they're gonna if they're gonna if they're gonna man him up, AJ Brown, it's got to be Gilmore. Bland, there's no way Bland can handle him. No, no way, no way. Yeah, but I don't I don't know if Gilmore is a tra- is a is a is a what are the what's the term for, uh, for someone who a trail like like he's gonna trail listen. corner. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know uh-huh. if they they have him doing that at this stage of his. We'll, we'll ask Greg Sunday. We'll ask Greg and Jason if they notice. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, listen, I don't think Bland's terrible. I mean, from what I've watched, he's, he's been player, but he's, he's been all right. You know, I know he's more yeah, of a he's nickel been, than an outside, right. but he's been okay. But strength wise, I, Gilmore can do it because he's done his entire career. He's, when he's played pure man, yeah. He's particularly a with player. New England, that that's how he became Gilly Lock. Is that his ability to to, to be glue? Yep. On almost like Revis, you know, step low Revis. That's how elite he was at, at, at the height of his career. Still doing well, and uh, they're glad to have him. That's a pretty good trade they they made with the Colts. So I'm interested to see uh, how they do that against this, and then getting Goddard involved against Dallas's. And, and again, we just mentioned it how how George Kittle scored three touchdowns, and they were down the seam too. I know he got some seam throws. Goddard could really do that. And then again, to finish this off, Eagles offensive line's got to hold up against that very deep front, but they've shown the ability to do it. What Boy, last year they sure did. They did. I think it's going to be a really interesting matchup, and I agree with you. I think that Gilmore on Brown is going to – that might determine the game right there if, the, if that mm-hmm. winds up being kind of a, a real prime yeah. matchup in this game. Sure. All right, let's go to look at Eagles defense versus this Dallas offense, which has been pretty hot lately. First, as we've been telling you, it's fall. We're busy. Who's got time for cooking a meal when you got work, when you got to get, you know, your film watching in, when we got to do podcasts five times and pregame shows that nobody has time, but that's why we love hello fresh. They deliver farm fresh food with pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes right to our doorstep. No more wasting time at the grocery store because America's number one meal kit helps make home cooking easy, efficient, and affordable. We don't waste time researching recipes. Don't have to plan meals. With HelloFresh, the shopping's done. The perfect amount of ingredients arrive with step-by-step recipe cards. You can't get more efficient than that. Plus, HelloFresh saves you time and money. It's 25% less expensive than takeout. So you get a good, healthy, home-cooked meal that tastes great, and you're not digging deep into your wallet, and you're not having that 
sort of takeout remorse. Everybody has takeout. You ever like, oh yeah, can't wait for takeout. Then you get barbecue and it's all greasy and crappy. And you're like, oh man, <laughs> why did I just spend like $25 on that? That's exactly. that was ridiculous for some like cold ribs that just left me with nothing but stains <laughs> on my shirt. All right. HelloFresh has great taste and great selection. They make food for meat lovers, seafood lovers, vegetarians, vegans, and anybody who loves the variety. So I've already told everybody my favorite is the spicy Creole stew. I had it again because they sent me two. It was fantastic. We had dinner at the table. We enjoyed it. My whole family did. We had time to sit down and eat because it didn't take long to make. So you've got to get it. HelloFresh.com slash 50 Eagles is the website. HelloFresh.com slash 50 Eagles. And use the promo code 50 Eagles. That's all one word, 50 Eagles for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50 Eagles and the promo code 50 Eagles for 50% off plus free shipping. Act now for America's number one meal kit. Speaking of meals, Adam Kaplan, Dak Prescott's been feasting lately. He's had two really, really good games. Yeah, he's played Clay Harbor yes. and Greg Cosell talked about this, and they even actually diagrammed some all-22 footage just to show you the kind of rhythm that he's been. Uh, he's actually moving around a little bit and running a little bit more second reaction mm -hmm. type plays than he's been yeah. doing, um, and he's been throwing the ball really well. Honestly, if you take out the San Francisco game, he's had an unbelievable season. So uh, I, I had the numbers on me but well. the, of the last two games. It's improved, um, yeah. He, he, yeah. He, he had some moments he'd like to have back earlier in the season. But yeah. overall, he's played solid football, way better the last two games. Last week, terrific. Now, I get it. The Rams aren't very good. As we get into the Cowboys matchups here, see, they're really deep. Now that Gallup's healthy, Jalen Tolbert's actually part of the rotation because he didn't do anything last year. Right. And even their their kickoff returner, uh, Turpin, they use him a couple times a game. He's explosive. So, believe it or not, they're legit five deep Yeah. at receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake Ferguson's their tight end, second year tight end, and Luke Schoonmaker is over his plantar fascia injury. He's their when they go twelve. Now they're going way more eleven this year because they're so deep at receiver. They went about sixty percent eleven personnel last week. I'm expecting. I think you mentioned it. I th I'm expecting to go heavy eleven. Why? Why wouldn't you against this Eagles secondary that they're holding on, folks? They're holding on for dear life right now. It's not pretty. Yeah, in the I back mean, look end still. It, 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 it doesn't take you and I or anybody watch tape to realize that the whole CD lamb who splits time between the outside and the slot, the matchup there is, is threatens to be really bad for the Eagles. I mean, I think that's oh, pretty obvious. he went off like, best game as a pro yeah. last week. Best yeah. game. And I'm sure the Cowboys are going to say, you know, we don't need to be as gimmicky as Washington, as far as three-step drop, three-step drop. Like we have, we can probably, we yeah. have a good enough offensive line where if we can block this thing up, Maybe get a few chips. So the one thing if I'm Dallas, I might have taken note of is if I use a tight end a little bit to chip or running back to chip, just buy Dak Prescott like a half a second more. That might give him some really good time to hit Prescott and Ferguson down the seams against this Eagles defense. Yeah, Ferguson scored last week. Lamb was on un unreal. 12 for 152 touchdowns and 14 targets. Uh, he had all day to throw. Prescott, he was awesome. So so accurate. One pick. Uh, it seemed like it had the game in close. They scored a court, They could have scored sixty. <laughs> Poor yeah. Rams, because what happened? The, the, the jig was up. The, the Rams have been living dangerously with this no-name secondary, and they they got they got smoked. Yep. But the one negative on offense is the running game. It has not been good. It, it's I don't I know their scheme has changed because the offense has changed. Right. Went from the Kellen Moore spread offense to the old school West Coast offense under Mike McCarthy. And it hasn't happened for Pollard. He's not getting explosive plays. I know he's capable, uh, particularly in the, the past game. It's not happening. That that helps the Eagles. But we know the Eagles are a great run defense. But mm -hmm. they're actually not getting the big explosive with Pollard in the passing game for the most part. And that's that's kind of why when you, you look at this Dallas offense, it's not complete because they're just not getting the explosives out of the run game. And Rico Dowdles, their number two running back, that was a mistake. They should have signed a veteran. Uh, they, well, they did. They signed Ronald Jones, but they wound up cutting him. He also had a two-game suspension. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. That's one difference from last year. Is they're not getting the, the big run plays out of Pollard. Yeah, I think, you know, we talked about this maybe um, when we did our NFC East preview series back in August. We said it's one thing when you're a 50-50 back with Ezekiel Elliott and you can kind of come in and be somewhat of a change up and be used in special ways against the defense. Now you're the guy. And Tony Pollard's body, he's not like a 6'1", 210-pound rise. He's not a very big exactly. guy, but he's asked yep. now to be the lead 
high volume ball carrier. And you wonder if that is the reason why the explosion isn't there because he's just being used a whole lot more than he's ever been in the past. I mean, he's got decent numbers, but you're right. 3.9 per carry. Close. That guy was over that's... like five last year. And is over... it only three, nine? Yeah. 3.9 per carry. That's embarrassing. That's like, real... first of all, that's like, that's like plotting numbers. That's embarrassing. Yeah. I didn't know it was that bad. I just know from talking to people who grade their tape, it doesn't look the same, the run scheme. So it's a problem. Uh, that helps the Eagles. Now, we just talked about their their deep receiver core, Jake Ferguson, we just talked about. And the big one is whether Tyron Smith play, doesn't play. If he doesn't, which looks like it's going to be the Casey Smith five straight practices, advantage Eagles. That could actually be a big determinant in wh- who wins this game because Sweat could cr- wreak havoc. You mentioned the Eagles' ability to switch sides, put Reddick on that side. I know he's going to stand up. He's not going to play with his hand now, but that the point is he can get – he looks great. That's a, that's a big deal, and you know the crowd there, folks. It's going to be loud Sunday night, Sunday late Sunday afternoon, early Sunday evening, and it, I, I just cannot wait to see what, what happens here. Because if he doesn't play, they've got to protect. They've got to use. They got to get a second tight end. Their schoolmaker is that guy, right? Um, so I'm glad you brought up the tight end. The cowboy. I looked this up and. I was trying to find it. The Cowboys are a, it's like a top five or top 10 team as far as 12 personnel usage. Um, that's a big mm. Mike McCarthy thing. West Coast offense. Sorry, he likes to have two. Yes, but, but but it's funny. They will go. They're a team that will go back. If you if you go game by game, they're, they're, they're 11, 12 team. Right. It depends on the match. It just depends on who they've played. Of course. Of course. But last week. Yeah. Last week, they were heavier 11 because they knew the Ram, they could. They should be because the Rams sure. have nothing at corner. Right. But that's interesting. Their overall number is higher than you would think with 12. And yes, with Kellen Moore leaving, who's Mr. 11 personnel. Sure. Makes sense. So why that concerns me, and and as you said, it's matchup driven. If you're watching the tape of the Eagles, you're thinking, if I go 12 personnel, the Eagles may respond big nickel, right? I'm big. They want to be big. And if they respond big nickel, that means one of those safeties is probably going to come in and play the slot. Last week, it was Sidney Brown or Kevin Byer, they were alternating. When they were in conventional nickel, it was Eli Ricks. Either way, I think the Cowboys have like a are gonna feel like they have an advantage. But if I'm oh, if, God, if, yeah. I'm, if I'm the Cowboys, I'm throwing some 12 out early and seeing if they're putting Sidney Brown in the slot. And if they am, we're checking into passes and we're going whether it's Lamb or Ferguson or whoever, we're going after him because that was a big, big way for Washington to strike gold on first down, especially. Greg, Greg pointed this out, uh, Adam, in the show with Clay. The Washington threw heavily out of first down. They came out in a lot of, in 12. They looked like they were yeah. going to run and they would throw because they caught the Eagles in on advantage uh, or disadvantage, disadvantageous personnel packages, right? We saw, by the way, that's so why I, team... that's where I, yeah, let me just, just to finish off. That's where I wonder if <laughs> the Cowboys use those first 15 plays to say, all right, how are they responding? They're going to do, do this big nickel thing. Oh yeah, again, sure. I see what you mean. Or yeah. are they going to try to play more conventional nickel? Either way, we'll, we'll throw against Ricks too, but we just want to know whether it's going to be Ricks or Brown or whoever, based on what we show. Sure. All right. Before we give our picks, I just want to add to what you said. And the reason why coaches I've talked to down for 20 years say this, you should always throw early in the game because defenses typically are not set on what they really want to do. Right. You love to throw an early downs just like they did. You said now the short pass a game crushed the Eagles. It was like three step, three step out, out, out. That that defeated the pass rush. Mm-hmm. So as you said earlier, it's going to be interesting to see what McCarthy and Brian Schottenheimer, the OC, do to help negate that pass rush. Because if the Eagles should start getting off early with their pass rush, they're in trouble. Because Dak does not react to pressure as well as he used to when he was younger. Right. I know he's run better, but he's still not the same guy in reacting to pressure. Because, boy, he was elusive early in his career. Mm-hmm. He's not a small guy. He's six, two and a half. He's built pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I'm just interested to see what, what the what the approach is uh, here. Um, both sides do. Does this, What does Desai do against Dak, right? What does Desai do? Does he come out? If they're, Are they going to come out try, a quick game to help to negate the Eagles pass rush? And then opposite, obviously, what 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 does Dallas do to to disrupt the Eagles' timing on, on their passing game? And that that's why you said earlier today in the show, the over under isn't it only like forty seven or something? That is a great is question. Um, I for it changed from earlier in the week. I'll tell you in a second. But I was surprised. Yeah, I thought it was I, I low for the game. I, I know the Eagles were favored, right? There was something. Um, oh yeah, they're, 
It was something yeah, like they that. are three I and forty-seven. Yeah, I, I see. All right, yeah. so I just want to throw that in there because it, yeah, no, it's, it's the chess match as we this game up. Yeah, chess match. Yeah, it was an over under. It was an over under of 40, uh, 47. Yeah, that's that was surprising to me. Yep. I, I don't know if I agree, but then again, they they're better than that <laughs> than I am. All right, so that's again a big thing to watch is do the Cowboys throw on first down? Do they come out in twelve? Are they trying to dictate Eagles defensive personnel to find great matchups on the inside the way Washington uh, was able to do? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, and then I think there's a big key on Eagles linebackers. You know, we have to see are are mm. is Sean Desai going to keep playing three linebackers? Is it going to be a rotation? Is he happy with everything we see we about everything? You know, in the last pod. But that's another area that that might be of concern in pass coverage and zone drops, then as opposed to ooh, what it was they they got killed last week. Oh, yeah. they got killed. The the second level intermediate throws, the safeties got crushed. Yeah, the linebackers got crushed. And where does CD Lamb reside? In the middle when it, when when he's doing slot, he drops in zones. Mm-hmm. He destroys zone coverage. He's incredible at it. No doubt about it. Really good. All right. Um, let us do what we do best, but first we're going to tell you to check out our friends at phlsportsnation.com. They're enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams. For the fan, by the fan is their motto, so make sure you check them out at phlsportsnation.com and on Twitter at phlsportsnation. Let's also pause to hear a word from our great friends at Sky Motor Cars. And if you happen to stop in the Sky Motor Cars, make sure you tell them Adam just sent you because you will get a great deal. That's out there in Westchester, PA. All off right. 202. Off route to, uh, yeah, 202. So I'll start with you, as I always do. Okay. Do the Eagles cover? Do they win? What do you I, think? Here it is, real quick. Yep. Uh, no, no, don't. I won't beat around the bush. This is easy. I got it. Eagles 27, Dallas 23. So they do Eagles cover. 27, Dallas. I'm writing this down. In case you pull one of your, I'm going to change it at the last minute based on. I only changed it once because I know. I'm just when uh, Xavier Howard's out, man, that changed everything. It sure as hell did. We were right. Me and, me and Jason were right. You were right to change. That's correct. You could have been like me and Greg and just had faith to begin with, but that's a different story. <laughs> I, um, I actually am not a man of uh, of good faith this weekend. I, I think the Cowboys Ooh. are actually going to win this game. I think it's going to be a little high scoring yeah. than that. Total, uh, I am picking the Cowboys to win 31 to 23. That is how nice. I'm seeing it. So 54. that would be uh, right. a big time over. All right. Remember, Fringe Bar, come check us out at the place. We're going to have a great time. Make sure you see us there. Watch the show. It's going to be a wonderful spot. 140 North Columbus Boulevard. They're on the Delaware River waterfront. And if you have any questions for us, we're bringing back, we're going to answer some questions in our midweek pod. So leave us a five-star review on Apple. And I promise Adam and I will answer your question. If you leave us a five-star review with a question, we will answer it in our Wednesday podcast. So we look forward to that as well. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. As always, we thank you for flying with us inside the birds. Sky Motor Cars in Westchester is a different sort of dealership. All it takes is one look at their Highline pre-owned vehicles that people over the country want to see. Owner Brett Schiller, make sure you don't spend a dime of your money before you purchase the car. Sky Motor Cars allows you to make all the decisions regarding your next vehicle. At Sky Motor Cars, you never have to spend more than necessary. Visit SkyMotorCars.com today or call 610-918-7225. And if you happen to stop in the Sky Motor Cars, make sure you tell them Adam just sent you because you will get a great deal. That's out there in Westchester, PA. All off right. 202. Off route to, uh, yeah, 202. So I'll start with you, as I always do. Okay. Do the Eagles cover? Do they win? What do you I, think? Here it is, real quick. Yep. No, 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 don't, I won't beat around the bush. This is easy. I got it. Eagles 27, Dallas 23. So they do Eagles cover 27 Dallas. I'm writing this down in case you pull one of your, I'm going to change it at the last minute based on. I only change it once because I know I'm just when uh, Xavier Howard's out, man, that changed everything. It sure as hell did. We were right. Me and, me and Jason were right. You were right to change. That's correct. You could have been like me and Greg and just had faith to begin with, but that's a different story. <laughs> around. Um, I actually am not a man of, uh, of good faith this weekend. I, I think the Cowboys oh. are actually going to win this game. I think it's going to be a little high scoring yeah. than that 
total. Uh, I am picking the Cowboys to win 31 to 23. That is how nice. I'm seeing it. So that would be uh, right. a big time over. All right. Remember, Fringe Bar, come check us out at the place. We're going to have a great time. Make sure you see us there. Watch the show. It's going to be a wonderful spot. 140 North Columbus Boulevard. there on the Delaware River waterfront. And if you have any questions for us, we're bringing back. We're going to answer some questions in our midweek pod. So leave us a five-star review on Apple. And I promise Adam and I will answer your question. If you leave us a five-star review with a question, we will answer it in our Wednesday podcast. So we look forward to that as well all right everybody that's gonna do it for this episode of inside the birds the leading podcast and eagles intel as always we thank you for flying with us inside the birds